I'm doing a search today on this Portuguese website. So I scroll a little bit down, then pick one random category, click search, and then I have some records. Here I want to scrape each name and each CRM value. The challenge today is that I have multiple pages. In fact, 1169 pages. So I want to scrape each page. And I have no next button, so I'll need to create a loop for that with a dynamic selector. The way to do it is to go to Power Automate Desktop. First, we will launch a new Chrome and we'll drag that one in. I will not launch a new instance. You could create the flow that will actually do the search, but for now, we will start at the scraping. I'll find a tab title that is here and I'll click Save. To extract the data, at least from the first page, we will find and extract data from web page and drag it in. Here I'll need to open up my data and navigate to the first item. So I move the live web helper over here. And the first item, that is my name, that's the title here. So I right click that, extract element value and pick it. You can see it appears over here in the live web helper. Then we need to tell Power Automate Desktop that this is a pattern. So find a second item, right click, Extract element value and pick the text here. There you go. Power Automate Desktop automatically recognize that here we have a pattern. Then we want the CRM value. It looks like we can't get the value out itself, at least not now. So what I'll do, I right click, extract element value and then just take the CRM. There you go. Because we've defined a pattern with the titles and the names, then we'll have a pattern over here as well. We want to get rid of the CRM. And we have several ways to do this. I can click Advanced. And here you'll see the two CSS selectors for these two. So this one is the name and this one is the CRM. If I go to Regex, and Regex is, is the series of patterns that defines a series of characters that defines a search pattern. What I can do here is that I can just apply a very simple Regex. I want to say, look behind the CRM colon space, and it will look something like this. So now I'm saying looks behind something, then that will be the CRM colon space and then the parentheses. I still haven't extracted anything. I'm just saying where to start. And that will be right at the value. Then I want to say grab any character that appears one or uh, more times. And watch what will happen over here in the value two column when I click OK. There you go. We now have our values. Then I can click finish. I click save once more. The data will get saved in data from web page. Let's try to run the automation to see that this work. So if I go back to Power Automate Desktop, over here in variables, you can see that 10 rows and two columns. You can double click that. And here we have it. I mean, we still need to get all the other pages, but this is for the first page and it's dynamic. It will work on any search page. So now we want to scrape multiple pages. And first, what our strategy will be is to go down here and find the last page number. Of course, this will work with when we're on this page, but it should work on every search we do. So whatever large page number we have, this solution will work. Go back here. Then up in actions, find and extract data from a page and drag it in. Here we will open up our searches again. Find the last number here, right click, extract element value and pick it. Then we have it, we click finish. Scroll a little bit down and instead of data from web page two, we will call this last page. Always rename your variables produced to names that actually make sense. That will make it easier to maintain for you and your colleague. So now we have the last page number. Let me just try to run it again to see that we are able to extract it here in Power Automate Desktop. Now in the last page variable, go double click that and we have a data table with the result. The trick here is that this is not a normal text variable. This is a data table. So we will need to refer to it saying that column one, uh, column one, row one, grab whatever is done in that cell. And the way to do this is that because it's zero index, that means that the first row is index zero and the first column is index zero. This will be 0.0. .0. So now you know that. Now we can do the actual multi page scraping. We want to have a page counter that will tell us what page we are on. So then we can use that to click on the next page all the way up to the last page. So go find a set variable, drag it in here. 
over here you'll say page count so this one will keep track of it and since we're starting at page one we will give it the value one to begin with then we also want to have a loop so i'll find a loop condition and i'll drag in that loop condition so I want to start and I want to say I want this one to run as long as the page count is less than or equal to the last page. And then I'll add one to it each time this has ran. So at some point it will reach the last page and stop. So in the first operand, I will have the page count. Then I want to say um, is less than or equal to. And now I can put in the last page. So click this X here, last page. But as I told you, we need to say 0, 0.0. The way to do it is to go in here. Then you'll say 0 hard, in hard brackets. That is the rows. And this is the columns. So I'll click save. So now we'll run as long as this is true. It will be true forever now because this we haven't done anything to the page count value. So for each one of these iterations in the loop, we will add one to the page count. We will do that in the end of it. Up here in variable, instead of just writing it in, we can just click this X and say page count. To add one to it, I'll just take the current value of the page count, and then inside here, I'll say plus one. This will add one to it. We still haven't done nothing. But now we can start to click the link. And what we will do here is that we'll need to find something specific where we can use this uh, page count in the actual address. Otherwise, it will not work. The way to inspect it is to press F12 on your keyboard. That will open up the developer tools. I prefer to have it here in the bottom. And what you can do if yours looks like this, click these three dots and duck to the bottom. So now I want to inspect like the two, three, four. And what I can do here is that I can click this little arrow, click the two, there you go. We are in the highlighted line, but one before we can see a date num. And if I hover my mouse over, you can actually see that this is the button. And the data num three, data num four, and data num five. So we can use this selector. We will use the li element and the attribute data num, and then we will put our page count inside of this instead of this two. So what we will do here, and let me just find a click link on the web page here, and drag it in in the beginning of the loop before the set variable. So we'll need to create a UI element and we can just pick one of them. We will change it. So I control left click and then I click save. So we need to change this and we'll go over to the UI elements. This is this stack of paper over here. First, we'll rename it because we will end up with, um, oh, can press F2. We'll end up with a dynamic selector and not just a click on the two. So this one, you can say dynamic H button, call it something meaningful so it's easy to maintain for you and your colleagues. Then I can double click it. Here we have the selector as it is right now. And let's just see that um, what I can do here is that, let me just, uh, this is the preview selector. I can copy this one out. I will do it into a notepad just so we can inspect it. Because now we'll go back to the browser and check what we have to do different. So this is the Q and one. And if we look a little bit closer, so what Power Automate Desktop says, well, we need to um, we need to be and here you can see th this li class equal to paginations page l paginations page. This is actually this one here. So um, what we want to do is that we uh, will and this is saying that get us the first one. That's because we define it to click two. And then uh, it says uh, go into the A element and here uh, it wanted to, to click here. But we just want to click the, uh, the whole button. So what we can do here is that I can delete these two uh, guys here. And then I want to say I, uh, I really don't need that attribute because that one you say is the same and in each one of these. And that's why we had the equal to. I'll just use the data num because and uh, that one keeps track of where we actually um, where we actually are. So what we can do here is that I can uh, instead of this class uh, equal to, I can say the data num equals to two. So I can uh, copy this one out here and I go back here. So what we will do is to delete it right here. And then I'll put in the data num equals two. 
Of course, we will need our variable in here, but we will see how that looks uh, later on. So this is the selector I use. I just copy it over. We could have done it in Power Automate Desktop, but I prefer to show it here. The way to edit this is to go into the text editor, delete it here and paste this one in. Since we wanted to have our page count up here, I can just delete this quotation mark and two, and then we'll put our variable in because we have a, a page count variable that we can click. So if I select a variable, I can use the page count. Now you can see it got inserted here. Then we can click save. So what will happen here is that we'll first, of course, we'll click the page one, which could be a little bit redundant, but that's the way to do it. And then we'll click uh, the next time this page count will be two. Then we will click it again. We will click it all the way up to uh, the last page is reached. Then we will click the last page and then we'll stop since now the page count exceeds the number of the last page. I need to make sure that I'm on the page one when I'm testing because we just attached it to it. You can also have it. the page one needs to be visible at least. But let us see if we can actually make this work. We will only scrape the first page, but then we can just move it down. So now we are starting our flow. And here we click the one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you can see we will click all the way up to 1100. So mission accomplished. And now I just need to make sure that uh, I can actually um, uh, stop this automation. You can see that we have uh, we have created a uh, quite um, aggressive uh, one. But what I can do here is that I can just close down the browser. And I think I actually do that. This will cause an error. That is fine. And then I need to open up the browser again. So let me just uh, Pause the video and open up the browser. I did that here in the background. Of course, we could have done it in the video, but I just prefer I need to find the link here. So what we will do is to create the automation and you could create a delay or just um, kill it like I did here. But uh, this part works. We now just need to extract and we already have that. So I can just bring this guy here extract down below or the click link on web page. So now we are extracting each side. What will happen here is that this data will get overwritten over and over, which uh, will not be preferable. So we need to write to Excel. Um, and first we will just write it uh, one time and then we will see how we can uh, in the loop how we can uh, write it over and over. So what I will do here is that I'll launch a new Excel instance. It just will just be a blank one. So I'll just uh, have it up here. And this will, we will not make it visible. The variables produced will be Excel instance. So now we are launching an Excel instance, then we can start writing to it. And if we want headers on, we need to specify those first. So I'll do this. So then I'll say write to Excel worksheet. And here I will have it in. So um, in the end of this loop condition, I want to um, I want to have my actual data. And up here I will write in the actual header one time for all. So this one will the, the header will only be uh, should only be, be typed in once, and then we will get it all the way down. So uh, it looks like this. To write a row into our Excel sheet, this will look like this. Parentheses then uh, curly brackets, then hard brackets. And now we can have the names. Let's just say name like this. And we can say CRM uh, like this. So this will be our row that we put into the Excel. We want to start in A and then one. Then we can click save. So similarly, if we wanted to write this in just below this, it will just look like this. So after the scraping, we write it back to Excel. What do we want to write? I'm writing the data from web page. That is fine. Then we will just do the A2. But what will happen here is that um, we're actually writing it, uh, overwriting it for each loop condition. We will combat this by having a get first free column row. Make sure you pick the first one here. So we will need to, in the, in the start of each loop, we will just get the first free column and row. Here it will be the first, we will use the first free row that will give us a value two because that's the first free row here. And then we will have it dynamically. 
So if I just drag this one here, it will produce two variables. We will not use the first three column, but only the first three row. We can go in here and we can actually deactivate it. This is best practice since we're not using it. We only want to use the first three row. I'll click save. Now I can use this first three row. Then I know exactly where I want to uh, write it in my write to Excel worksheet. So instead of this row, I'll just use this uh, first three uh, row variable like this and I'll click save. Finally, we will have a close Excel. And I'll drag this one in. So here I will I can choose to save. And if I choose to save document as I need a document path. Let me show you the easiest way to do it. What I can do is just click save, go to my desktop, and I'll just right click new, and then I'll pick a Microsoft Excel worksheet. Then you just shift right click, I repeat shift right click, copy as path, I go back to power automate desktop. And in these close Excel, open it, control V paste in the path. Remember to delete the two quotation marks like this and click save. So this will work for whatever side we have, we can do two things. First, let's just pick another UF here, so just the PB, for example. And here uh, to test that our solution works with this as well, 1558. And um, the way to do it uh, would also be to, I don't have time to wait for 150, uh, 500, and, uh, 500 pages. So you believe me, this will work. So here I will just say, well, I won't scrape all the way up to the last page. Let's just scrape all the way till the page count equals five. This will be the first five pages. That will be 50 result if we created our robot well. Remember to save your robot. And this was actually a question from Ada Nielsen. If you want your question solved, then put in in the comments below or post it in my Discord. The link for the Discord is also uh, at my um, in the description. So now we're clicking the one, then we're going to click the two, the three, and uh, the four and the five. So we're scraping the things, writing it back to Excel. We will inspect that everything works. We'll only have the f first five pages. But that was just a matter of preferences. We uh, preferred it like that. So now when the robot has finished, I can go in here. And here we can see that uh, um, it succeeded. At least it didn't proceed, pr produced any errors. And then I'll have my Excel sheet. I will have it here. Here we have the names, the CRMs. And if I scroll down, we have in fact 50 results. That is because we have headers on. So we have 51. The way to do it, the next advanced Power Automate desktop video is right here up for you. Go watch it to become the best developer you can be.